Hi everyone, this is Peter Online Computer Network Engineering Tutorial. I am here to you know, talk about IP routing. IP routing is a process of taking one packet you know, from one computer to another computer in a different network. Okay, so let's say this PC want to talk to this PC6, PC1 want to talk to PC6, for that packet to get you know, to get to PC6, routing must have taken place. That is IP routing. But before I start, I would like to tell you the analysis of this internet work, okay? You can see this is the IP address of this one here. This is the one link using fiber optic cable, okay? And this is the second subnet of this IP. The second subnet of it was used to connect this one link as well, which, you know, they are linked together using serial interface. Okay, and you can see this router tray, which happened to be in another location. Okay, where is where the internet age is connected to the internet. Okay, which means this PC is connected, this network is connected to the internet using this router. Okay, so now you can see, as I, as I was saying, this network here was submitted to. Okay. This is a zero subnet and this is a four subnet. Of course, if you want to connect your one link with IP address, it must be two, two IP addresses, which will, you know, is 30 bit, that's slash 30, okay? You can see the first subnet is zero, the second subnet is four. For you to get the one link, you must use a block size of four, okay? You can see the first IP address, which is this one is here, the second is in this zero subnet, which is this zero. The, the broadcast address is the last, okay? The next subnet will be this, and the first is this, the second, the last is this, and the, you know, broadcast is, you know, seven. If I want to add another subnet, I add eight, another four plus four, eight. So now, for now, is this, I just want to know you how I got this, you know, these addresses for one, okay? So here is the valid IP addresses. Here are the valid IP address. These are network numbers which are not assignable, okay? This is a broadcast, this is a network. So here, here, this is a valid for here, and this valid for here, and this valid for here. So that is it. So now, because they are on different network, okay? So now this is my LAN, this is my LAN. I use this IP, classful IP address, which has a subnet mass of 24 bits, okay? 255 is 8-bit, 255 is 8-bit, 255 is 8-bit, and they are, you know, the network portion of this IP address. So 8 times 3, 24 bits, okay? So this zero is where the host, the IP addresses are generated, okay? Which can give you, that is 2 power 8 minus 2, which is equal to 256 minus 2. Remember that minus 2 is the network address, which is not assignable, which is this, and the broadcast address, which is also not assignable. So the between 1 and 254 are the valid IP addresses. And router LAN interface has taken number 1 IP address, and this PC1 has taken number 2, and PC2 has taken number 3. Okay? This is 250, 254 valid IP addresses in each one. So the same thing is applicable to this, and that is why I used slash 24, which is the 24 bits I talked about for, you know, the subnet mask, okay? So now, that is it. So this is the IP of this. This is the classical IP of this LAN. This is the classical IP of this LAN, and this is the classical IP of this one. You can see here I put IP network. IP network, IP network. Okay, so now I assign default gateway. This default gateway, this IP address here on router interface is 192.168.10.1 slash 24. Okay, for here. And this IP address will stand as default gateway to these pieces. Without this default gateway address, these pieces cannot communicate with another network communicate with compu these computers or these computers or any computer on the internet. So they use the default gateway as in you know, a gateway to the internet, gateway to the different network. 
just like Togate, you are gotten, you are communicating with your IP networks. They can communicate together. These pieces, 254 pieces, can communicate, but you, without, whether with, you know, default gateway or without default gateway, they can communicate. But hence, they are going to another network. The router must have, they must have routers, you know, default gateway in their IP address, um, you know, you know, catch. I will show you how to do that in a later uh, tutorial. So now, what are we saying here? So you can see that after configuring your network, setting up your, uh, your internet work, do you know that these PCs, PCs here cannot communicate with PCs here, or PCs here. These PCs cannot communicate and you configure what is called routing protocol. And remember, we are talking of IP routing. You configure what is called routing protocol, okay? What do I mean by routing protocol? Routing protocol is a way of, you know, creating routes, integrating these networks. They are route IP networks, okay? You create a route, okay? By configuring a routing protocol in this router, you are creating a route of this network and this network in this route network. Okay, you can see this network IP address. This the IP address of this network is in this router's routing table as the route to this network. This network will use this as route to this network. Okay. So now you can see because I have configured a routing protocol. Now this router now has root, this network's root in its routing table. This is the routing table of this router. I just place it here. Logically, is in this router, okay? So you can see this network address. This LAN is in its routing table. And this LAN here is in its routing table. And this network here is in this routing table. You can see it. So I come here as well. You can see that this network here is in this router's routing table. And this network here is in this router's routing table. But the one IP addresses are missing here. Do you know why? Because this router is connected to this network and connect to this network. It's connected to this and it's also connected to this, just like this. This network is here and this network is here. So because this IP address have been configured inside this router, you in this serial link, and these have been configured in this number two of these have been configured inside this routing you know, IP address in this link, using this link. So this router has this network in its routing table and it has its, that is why it's missing here. Automatically by default is here. So now we can see coming to this last, we, where the internet age is, is the, you know, the root. This network has the root. You can see the first classful, you know, IP address of this LAN is in this routing table as the route to this network. And you can see this is in this routing table as root to this network. You can see this is in, which is this network, is in routing table as root to this network. Without all this, they can't communicate. They can only communicate within their LAN, okay? They can only communicate within the alarm, okay? But they can communicate using the exit interfaces, okay? So now, they are set to communicate, okay? So now, after doing this, if you want to know whether routing have started, because for this PC, to communicate with this PC, which means routing must have taken place. Now, you ping this PC from this PC. Ping means packet internet dropper. Packet internet dropper is an echo request. ICMP, you know, request. Internet control message protocol. You want to test if this network can communicate with this network. And for it to go through, this is routing. And I want to explain what happened there. How this PC root file or packet or that echo request to this PC. So now this PC package this PC6 IP address, which is the destination IP address, okay? And its own IP address is the source 
IP address. Now, he sent an app request in form of broadcast asking if you are the owner of this IP address, please reply me with your mark. And remember, this PC here has the default gateway in its address, you know, cache. Okay? So it send an app request because this PC one thought that the PC6 is in its LAN. Now, router received this app, address resolution protocol, received it and, you know, informed PC1 that the destination IP is not in your subnetwork, is in a different subnetwork. So what you do, bring this packet, use my LAN MAC address and bring this packet to me. Do you know what happened there? Because PCs in a LAN communicate using MAC address and that was why this PC was looking for the MAC address of this PC. Okay? Because even as these PCs are connected together, PC1 and PC2, if they have not communicated for the first time, for the PC1 to communicate with PC2, an app request must be sent. Do you know why? So that PC2 would use, you know, its IP address to, you know, to respond. MAC address, okay? When PC send that broke app request, switch, this is a switch, we now install PC1 MAC address in its MAC address. That's CAM table, Con you know, or MAC address table. Okay, now and send that app to this PC2. For this PC2, we respond. Now, the switch also install PC2 MAC address in its MAC address table. Do you know why? Next time they want to talk, this IP address will be useless. They won't use IP address, they use MAC address to communicate. LANs use PCs in a LAN, uses their MAC addresses to send and receive files or data or packets. Okay, so now PC1 thought that this is in its own routing table because, because the MAC address is not in existence here. It sent an app request which the router responded and said, no, it is not in your, you know, MAC, it is not in your, this PC you are trying to communicate is not in your LAN, it's not in your net, IP network. Use my own MAC address and bring this file because router can also communicate with, you know, this Router is this router LAN interface here is part of the LAN. So it communicates with them using MAC address. It say, take my MAC address and bring the file. And that is where IP header and trailer, you know, is added. That is the header, okay, is added to this packet and root to router. Router receives it. When router receives it, router will discard because now. Remember, the destination MAC address is the router LAN interface. Why the source MAC address is this PC's MAC address with the source MAC address? The destination IP address is PC6. Now I send it to router. Router received it and discard MAC address because MAC address cannot continue and place a new MAC address on this, LAN, this interface here, which happens to be the fiber. Okay? That is you know, layer two header, layer two header and trailer, the same thing that happened here, okay? Layer two header and trailer, you know, are added to this packet with the destination IP address and, you know, source mark. And this destination IP address, you know, will continue, I mean, the, destination, the source IP will continue with the data and the destination IP. When it got here, this router two received it. And remember, when router when Rata1 received this information, Rata1 look into its routing table and see that the destination IP exists in this route. And they forward it here, they forwarded the IP packet here. And this Rata2 received the packet and open it and discard the MAC address, which is the layer two header. It cannot continue, it's locally significant, okay? So I hand it over to this IP address because it has checked the routing table and discovered that the route to the destination device is here, which is the 30, in the 30 network. Okay, it send it to this interface through this exit port. Send it to this IP address. The IP address continue. Remember, the source IP 
is still going with the destination IP with a packet. Okay, they are still going. That's network header with a packet must continue. Okay, they must continue in route to this network. Now I send it. When this received it, and place it into router. Router checked, this router thread checked, and discovered that the destination IP reside in its routing table and its network. Okay, this is actually the destination network where this packet is going to. And router throws it. Router asks using the LAN interface of course, MAC address. Okay, because remember, it was only IP, source IP, destination IP, and the packet. Okay, the MAC address that was placed here were, you know, were discarded here and placed the new MAC address of this. Okay, and when it got here, the router discarded that MAC address because it cannot continue and place this. Serial link does not have MAC address. Okay, Serial link has what is called PPP, point to point protocol. It's also layer two. It's also a layer two protocol or high level data link, you know, control protocol. Okay. Each one of these depends on the one you use to configure this serial link is added. Okay, that is layer two header and trailer. When it got here, the router's LAN interface used its MAC address and send an app request. If you are the owner of this IP, reply me with your MAC address. That is when the MAC address of when this LAN PC have not communicated with or at a trail LAN interface before. Had it been there, it had been going, you know, to and fro, which means the LAN interface of this router must have the, you know, MAC address of this PC. So in that case, there's no need for app request. All the router need to do is, you know, look up and send the packet to that, you know. Now the LAN MAC, this LAN interface here, this latest LAN interface here, the MAC address we now have not changed to source MAC. Why the PC3 MAC is the destination MAC and destination IP address. Remember, this source IP address is still going with the data. And this PC3 received the information and remove the layer three header, layer two header. Okay, and check the packet and see that this is echo request. Okay, when PC3 notice that, I mean PC6, noting that is, notice that is echo request from this PC1, the source. What PC3, PC6 we do is to package that, you know, information, a kind of, that's echo reply now. Package the packet, add layer two header and trailer, and send it to its default gateway. Default gateway. Remember, I told you every PC here are assigned default gateway. That is, the IP address of the LAN interface of this router, which happened to be one. You send that packet to its default gateway. The default gateway receives it and said, okay, and discard the layer two header and throw it to its one interface, serial interface, where the packet will continue its journey. And remember, the source IP address now becomes the destination IP address, the source IP address of PC1 becomes the destination IP address now. And why the PC6 becomes the source IP? Because it's sending echo reply that, yes, I am alive, I can communicate with you. Now, it's sent. When it comes here, of course, they have been communicating. That do long process may not continue because, you know, their route exists. And data have passed through this with information. So it's replying now and come to PC1, where PC1 received the data as successful communication, okay? It receives it as successful communication. I can communicate with PC. PC1 will look at it, oh, so PC6 is alive, so I can really communicate with PC6. And do you know what you will see that in their window command line? You will see four packets sent, four received zero lost, which means four packets, because ICMP echo request uses four packets, okay, was sent, and four was received, which is a successful, you know, pinging, zero lost. 
Had it been that communication was not successful, the PC1, we got this error message, destination unreachable. Okay, destination unreachable, which means it cannot reach, get to PCCs or timeout, timeout, timeout into four. Okay, because it's four, it was really a four packet. So that is how, you know, computers communicate using routing, you know, protocol, using a, a kind of routing. Okay, when a packet is sent and received, from different network, routing must have taken place, okay? And each PC that want to communicate with another PC in another network, just like I said earlier, must have a default gateway of the router. As you're assigning that PC IP address, you will see a column where default gateway, you put this router's IP address as well. So that is it. If you like this video, do not hesitate to share. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.